Oh, Jim. Oh, hey, Jim. Oh. Okay, I'm not quite sure I've got you on mute. That's me on mute. Hello there. Hello, ho. Hello there. <laughs> How are you? I'm very good. I swear you're, you're looking good. Skinny, mate. You've lost so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start eating Mars bars. <laughs> Mars bars? No one eat Mars bars, mate. That was my downfall. Yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, Chris, how are you doing? He's <laughs> down there. Claire. No, nah, Claire's running. <laughs> Who's that? Who's so, that? Uh, I think it could be Elaine, I think. Is that Elaine on the Galaxy tab? I think it could be. Elaine? You, you, you're oh, Ch Jim's wife, Elaine. Hi, I spoke to you yesterday. Chris, how's it going? I can't, you can't, can't hear, there's no audio. No, I don't. I, don't, you've got audio no, I haven't got uh, audio turned off on the Elaine. Um, Elaine, we're going to call you Galaxy Tabe now from now on. That's, <laughs> that's your nickname Tab. on there. Oh, video. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, got no video for you, buddy. Um, uh, calling Jim. Jim, Jim, Jim. I'm dressed for Everest already, see? Got the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> that's warm in here. Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, we're gone, we're gone. Oh, there we go. It's all right. Hi, Lane. Can you wave your hand? Say hi. That's it. Can't hear you, Lane. So I'm not quite sure whether you got your volume enabled on the. Uh, He's recording as well. Sorry, isn't it? On your it's screen. Yeah. No, I was talking to you, Lane. At least we can see what you look like now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> no, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so just a few more minutes, see if you uh, turns up. But, um, is, yeah, is, is Hugh joining us? Not too sure. I don't know where he is in the country, the world at the moment. So, um, oh, yes, Jim. Hey, Jim. Got his, uh, go for it, Jim. <laughs> is he relaxing the tile? Where's your cocoa, Jim? <laughs> brilliant brilliant that's why he's not got a video on because he's got his uh bath robe like, <laughs> half a lane jeez oh. is that coffee <laughs> there he is hey Hi, jim nice to see you again see me okay yeah got you mate can I hear you hear me okay as well yeah yeah right. good thanks excellent don't think you you will be joining us. I've not heard otherwise. Um, so we'll crack on. Okay. So um, welcome everybody. Hello, this is Jim, you know. <laughs> Hi guys. Jimmy, you no. Know, I need to get as fit as you, Jim. So you know, I need to be as fit as you were on Killy. <laughs> I'm a slob. 
Hey, oh, no. I've kind of, kind of drawn. I've been drawn back into work. Oh man, man, need to read the email again. I know. <laughs> Every job, dear. I know. It's no, a hard life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, then, guys. Um, hi, everybody. So, uh, we got you. Uh, I'll send you a photo of what Hugh looks like uh, later on. Um, yeah, so fantastic. Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. I'll start with, uh, uh, sort of a well, you know, you know. Have you had your hair cut, Simon? I've had it cut yesterday, you cheap. <laughs> <laughs> ah. yeah, oh, what's the cat's name, Jim? Rocky. Rocky. Rocky's decided he's going to step my knee because I'm, I'm doing something important now. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, guys, so intros. Got everybody there. There's Galaxy Tab, top left. There's Jim. The other half of Galaxy Tab, I think. <laughs> and uh, Simon <laughs> and Chris in face. And obviously me as well. So, hi there. We've got you. And uh, somebody missing there, Chris. Where's hey. the other half? Kay, Kay, she's she's down with her mum, Darren. Sorry, no, she oh, couldn't make no it. To, uh, she's to take her mum to hospital. Nothing serious. It's just a checkup. So she's staying with her mum in Wolverhampton for the for the night. Ah, oh, right. So okay. yeah, no, sends, sends out. no, fantastic. All right, guys, we haven't got much background noise. So what I'm probably going to do is mute everybody. Uh, I'm just going to do a sort of a short twenty minute presentation. Just go over some of the things, some of the questions as well. It's you. Ah, Hugh, 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 give us some video. Ah, sorry to wake you. you, mate. Mate, sorry to wake you. <laughs> Hugh. Oh, I see him. Hey, Hugh. <laughs> Can you hear us, Hugh? Give us a wave. <laughs> hey, mate, got you now. Got you. Where are you? Which part of the world are you in at the minute? Um, I'm just in Bali in Anglesey at the moment. How are you? So, where uh, yeah. you? So if you wave over to the Clinton Peninsula, you'll see uh, Simon and Chris. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, good. Nice one. Um, awesome paragliding, mate. Going to have to chat to you more about that. <laughs> yeah, Fantastic definitely, mate. <laughs> well, that's it. Fantastic. Got everybody here. So I'll say, Hugh, we've got about 20 minutes. Just want to cover some of the, the topics that have been raised uh, yeah. to us sort of directly beforehand. As well, so hopefully that will um, answer most of your questions. Um, okay, take about 20 sounds, minutes. Sounds good. At the end of that, there's an open sort of forum then to ask any questions uh, you wish. There's only us on this call, so it's only us going to be on the trek. So fantastic. We've actually got a trek leaving a week later, we've got three people on that trek. Um, so uh, they're going to be watching this video as well. They're not on the video, but some of the content will be relevant to those guys as well. Uh, are we like they're they joining us, or they the separate separate trek altogether? The separate trek. They couldn't get the timings together um, to come out with us, which is a shame. Um, but they're leaving a week later, so um, unfortunately, we won't see them. They'll be following us in our footsteps. Um, so, one announcement to, to make: Claire is actually coming with us uh, on the trip because Claire is now full time with us, uh, so she's no longer have as, as a job. So, um, yes, yeah, she's going to be coming with us uh, at the end of the trip as well. She's going to be flying out to Pokhara to have a look at some other trips that we're going to be putting on in the future as well. So, uh, that's pretty good. So, she's one of her bucket list as well to come out to Nepal. When I first went out in 2012, she wasn't too happy because she wanted to come as well. So, uh, but now she's joining us. Is that the one that uh, Nick and Ari went on, Darren? Yes, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You'll see a photo of Nick in a minute. <laughs> All right. So, how are they? You've been in touch. I haven't been in touch for a while. Yes, um, last I heard, probably about three or four months ago, they were fine. Yeah, all, all doing well. Uh, looking at going out to India uh, as well this year, uh, or next year, sorry. Um, so, yeah, so doing well. Yeah, lost the uh, hook up with them again. So, guys, just going to uh, mute you there and then um, just sort of eliminate the background noise. Uh, yeah, just make notes as we go along. We know we're used to this stuff. Uh, any questions, I may answer during the short presentation. So. So you got the right idea of having you see there, Q. I think I should have done mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit rude, guys. Um, oh, mate, no, that's, that's live, mate. It's not formal. <laughs> can you can you hear me, Darren? Yeah. Sorry, I've just been off. I've just got off the 
the wars. Yeah, bad timing. Sorry, yeah. mate. Yeah, I got you, mate. Can hear you, mate. Can hear you. So I'll uh, unmute that now. Okay, hopefully, can you just thumbs up if you can still hear me? Can you still hear me? Fantastic. Well done. So I've done that right. And uh, put that down. Stop the presentation. There we go. So welcome, guys. Welcome, everybody. Quite well, everybody, guys. I know it's some can be construed as being a bit sexy, but it's just easier then, ladies and gentlemen. So um, welcome, everybody. Thanks again for um, giving up some of your time there this evening. Um, looking at closing this um, sort of session down. I've only got an hour slot uh, on this anyway, so we have to finish by nine. And I've uh, got to keep a close eye on time. Hoping it all, we should finish, you know, sort of a lot before that. Uh, so it just really depends on how many questions we have. So, um, photo there. This is the, um, what we call the gateway to, uh, to the Kumbu. This is our staging post to, um, to Ever Space Camp Trek. This is Luklo Airport. And that's where we start. So, welcome everybody. Um, just cover, I'm going to cover shortly what uh, the content, some of the content I'm going to, um, I'm going to cover this evening. Uh, and also, you know, sort of provide the opportunity later on um, for you to to ask all, uh, to ask questions, uh, and just do a bit of an intro to yourselves as well. So the other guys on the on the uh, on the trek, um, sort of get a bit of background uh, to you as well. So yeah, Chris, there's um, there's the man himself uh, under the welcome sign. Uh, that's Nick, and uh, that's this is exactly where we're going to be going. In um, aha, Elaine, I think we got yeah, got sound on you now, Elaine. So I'm just going to mute you and I'll unmute you later. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, so this is the scenery and some of the terrain that we're going to be walking through and over. And um, yeah, it's obviously spectacular. There, that's sort of on the on the right screen there. That's a Tenzing Norgay uh, memorial, uh, under the watchful eye of uh, Mount Everest to, to the plume of a cloud coming off um, the summit there. So for one not only, I'm going to give you a little bit of a quiz for from any research on, on the trek as well and what's the video that I just shared uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm going to give you the answers at the end of this. Just write down if you know the name of this mountain. I'll give you a clue, it's not Mount Everest. What is the name of this mountain that we're going to pass quite a few times um, on, the, uh, on the trek? Okay, so um, quick welcome, which I've done. Uh, I was just going to go over some of the logistics, sort of high level. Um, most of the logistics and all the detail is in the brochure. Uh, there's a couple of items I have missed off, so I'm going to cover those uh, this evening. Um, going to create um, a slightly uh, better way to, to keep in touch. Certainly now we've only got three weeks to go. Facebook is great. Uh, I'm not always on Facebook, even sometimes it may look like I am. So I'm going to set up a WhatsApp group uh, as well. Uh, that's going to help uh, quite a few ways as well, and we'll go into support elements um, shortly uh, as well. I'm going to give you a sort of quick insight of what's the weather doing in uh, Kathmandu and Nepal right now, and what we can expect when we get there. Um, just want to check in with everybody's got the jab, so everybody's got their jabs scheduled in um, as well. I'll just give you a quick overview of what those jabs are. And um, just a little question about do we know what the time zone is in Nepal? Uh, it's a bit of a strange one, that. Uh, SIM card. Obviously, roaming charges are extortionate, certainly in Nepal as well. I'm going to give you some tips as well that you might want to consider um, to using your phone whilst you're, uh, whilst you're in country in Nepal. Uh, and there'll be an opportunity then to ask me any questions. Then the answer to name this mountain. Okay, away we go. So, local airport, um, christened Sir Edmund Hillary Airport. Uh, as Edmund Hillary, as we know, was the first uh, reported person to climb Mount Everest with uh, Tenzing Norgay, his Sherpa, his Sadar. Uh, and the history of uh, following on from that summit 
uh, successful summit in 1953, uh, Edmund Hillary did a lot for the community in Nepal. Uh, and pretty much he spent most of his um, days in Nepal doing a lot of charity work and stuff. And we'll sort of go over some of the background to this great sort of giant of a gentleman, the beekeeper uh, from New Zealand, uh, whilst you're through there. So I, in honour for him, uh, he died a few years ago now. Um, the local Nepalese um, called this particular airport airport and it's at 2860 meters this is where we fly into to start our trip okay so um there's a couple of typos here which i've just noticed so for the dates but all the dates on your itinerary are spot on all the flight details should be up to date in your itinerary as well if they're not please let me know and i'll send these out on an email uh, also so we depart from heathrow now I'll say we, got a confession to make. We love Nepal so much, me and Claire are heading out two days early, just have an extended holiday. No, only joking. We wanna make sure the hotel and everything is prepared and ready for you guys when you arrive. Um, we wanna meet with all our search chirp teams, our guides, our leaders as well. Uh, and this is the first couple of trips I did to Kili. This is what I uh, did for, for that. And it's just for the new trips. Um, just wanna make sure everything is, is, is right. Um, you know, I just want to make sure your rooms are right, all the logistics, the Sherpas are okay, porters are uh, properly looked after and everything else, and we just want to get there. So we're actually flying out on the Thursday, the second. Um, so we're going to be there a couple of days beforehand, hence the reason why we're setting up a WhatsApp group, just so we can keep in touch uh, pretty much whilst we're still out there as well. Um, so you guys will land uh, in Kathmandu uh, about half past two on the Sunday where we will meet you at the airport. You'll have time then to pass through customs, to passport control, and to obtain your visa. So visa on arrival, and I'll touch on that in a moment, so all the details there as well. So Sunday, it should be Monday the 6th and Tuesday the 7th. So Monday the 6th, the day after, we'll have time to do a kit check in the morning, and then we'll have time then to do a half day sightseeing tour around some of the, uh, the tourist attractions and the sites of Kathmandu. And then there'll be free time in the afternoon then to buy or to replenish any kit that you need to uh, purchase for the trek uh, and just chill out and pack and get ready. Uh, and then we'll have a, a meal in the hotel. Um, Tuesday the 7th, uh, that should read, um, we'll fly out to Lokla and we'll start our trek proper. Um, really excited about this, 21, 22 days out in the wilderness. Um, amazing, can't really wait uh, for this. And then we return via Lukla into Kathmandu. And then before we fly back, again, we'll have uh, a bit of time, uh, a day for souvenir hunting, go on some more sites, uh, you know, so it's fairly flexible. Um, sort of on that, and we'll arrive back in the UK on Saturday the 25th. Um, as on Killy, uh, the guys that were on Killy, we'll do a, a daily briefing as well of what we're looking at for the next day. Sort of for the agenda, you know, what's sort of the climate, what's the sort of temperature, what's the terrain going to be like. Unlike Kilimanjaro, um, we're going to have shorter days. Um, there's no rush. This is sort of, you know, a very chilled out uh, approach to trekking. And it's, yeah, it's still going to be tough, but it's not going to be nowhere near as tough as Kili. Uh, and it's, you know, we're going to have time to relax uh, sort of in the mid afternoons when we arrive at certain places as well. It's going to be a couple of tough days. Um, you know, one really tough day when we sort of go over the Chala Pass, uh, that's going to be sort of a, a, our longest day of the trek. Um, but all the rest of three to four hours, we'll have every third day, it'll be a rest day so we can acclimatize and just chill uh, and just um, just soak up the uh, the environment that we're in, surround the body's majestic peaks. So, visa on arrival, um, you haven't got your visa already from the uh, ne Nepalese. Um, embassy, visa on arrival, pretty straightforward. A uh, bit of paperwork when you get to the airport, and it'll cost about $40. Note to remember here you want the 30 day tourist visa. There's a 15, 30, and I think a 60, 90 day. You want a 30 day uh, tourist visa, uh, and that's about $40. Um, so it is dollars, it's not card or anything else. So you need physically the, the, the money in hand as well. Um, again, um, the accepted currency in country is dollars or Nepalese shillings, and you can only get Nepalese shillings um, in Nepal uh, as well. And it'll be 
uh, opportune moments to, uh, to to get those roles through there as well. So green currency, there's loads of ATMs, loads of cash button machines as well. Um, so you can move with through all that. As mentioned in the sort of the brochures, I'll notify your bank because um, it's Nepal and like Africa, it's one of the um, uh, one of the countries that will um, flag uh, a um, an out of character use on your cards. So let all your card companies know your bank know, uh, details, etc. Uh, your bank uh, notify them of uh, your travel plans. Uh, current weather. Uh, this was taken off this morning. Kathmandu is 26 degrees and sunny. Uh, a little bit of rain forecast this week. So this is typically the temperature that we're going to be looking at when we arrive in country in three weeks' time. Damchi Bazaar, obviously nearly 4,000 metres. It's going to be a little bit cooler. Nine degrees during the day, sub-zero at night. Uh, we are sleeping in, I'm going to say guest houses. If anybody's looked online, the guest house in Kathmandu is not like a guest house in Ambleside in Keswick uh, in the Lake District. It's wood-built um building sometimes they're the, the, the brick built as well but in essence the cold inside um so you're going to need obviously your warm sleeping bags in there as well um base camp obviously five and a half five thousand six hundred meters it's cold uh currently minus one during the day uh minus nine which is quite mild for, for overnight so expect that to go down to minus 15 minus 20 um, as well so you're going to need sort of you know, warm sleeping bags, even though we're not camping, still going to get cold. Time zone, five hours, 45 minutes. I've no idea why, to be quite honest. I must admit, I've not really Googled it. It's currently four hours, 45 minutes. Um, but when the clocks go back in the UK, it's five hours, 45 minutes. I normally round that up to six hours. Um, so, you know, if you're calling home or, you know, some people want to sort of track us, you know, we're sort of roughly six hours in front of the UK. Phone sim. Uh, best thing to do is to get your mobile phone unlocked if it isn't al already. Um, if you're tied into a contract uh, or locked in with any provider, say Vodafone or EE, there will be a number you can call to unlock your uh, phone. Uh, and then once you arrive in Kathmandu, you can obtain a SIM from the airport or from the Tamil district, uh, which is the main sort of tourist area in Kathmandu uh, as well. 3G, 4G, pretty good infrastructure uh, out there. And there's more and more 3G coverage now at the Kumbu, up the when we start trekking, a lot more than there was three or four years ago. And you know that that is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time as well. Certainly for the safety element, it's a great thing. If you want to disconnect, not so good. Um, for me, for, for for me from the business, really, it, it is really good so I can post regular updates uh, as and when I can uh, as well, depending on the speed and uh, of of um, the 3G network. Going to try Facebook Live as well, which would be pretty cool. So, um, yeah. So if you've got any questions on that, please let us know. And, okay, Jim, just move it there, mate. And, yeah, charging. Okay, like like on Killy, uh, like sort of other trekking, I would recommend that you bring USP power packs as well. Because um, we're out um, for a lot longer, it might be worthwhile buying two to bring with you as well. I'm going to share the the link um, that one of the guys from you know, one of one of uh, Jim's friends, Mike, came out to Kili last year, used, and uh, one of the guys used this year as well. Really good power pack. Uh, I'll share the link from Amazon on that, and it's one of the ones that we're going to be buying as well. We're going to be taking two, maybe even three. Solar charger, a must. And there's going to be nowhere really that we can plug our devices into whilst we're on the on the trail. So really, uh, you know, if you can get a, a reasonably good quality solar charger, Power Monkey, something like that, is really, really good uh, device to have. And spare batteries, lots of them. You know, if you're taking GoPros, not quite sure if you're bringing your, your drone you. Um, but yeah, bring, bring sort of spare batteries uh, as well, instantly if your devices take them. Because you don't want to be missing those moments. Nothing better than your own photographs. Uh, certainly better than mine, anyway. So vaccinations, this is taken off the NHS travel advisory uh, website this morning. Uh, again, advised, I'm not going to go through each one there. If you haven't got your jabs yet, uh, or haven't booked them in, I seriously think take that as an action for tomorrow uh, and get them scheduled in soon as, because we've only got three weeks before we uh, depart. Um, as an expedition leader in that, we're going to take a full expedition medical kit as well. We're going to have certain... Um, you know, first aid and expedition first aid elements in there, uh, and also some meds, med, uh, 
medicine as well. Um, but we also recommend that you bring your own personal med medication and also medication as well that's listed on the uh, on the list. You know, Imodium, um, Paracetamol, Dimox, um, you know, sort of anti-sickness tablets, so on and so forth. If you bring your own um, supply, then ours for pure emergencies, and we can back that up with your supply as well. We're going to have a satellite phone with us, and that's for, for, for checking in um, with our support back here in the UK. Um, we're going to have a UK support person. Uh, his name is Stu, Stu Westfield. Really good friend of mine, fellow expedition leader uh, as well. Uh, you know, what he doesn't know about Kilimanjaro in Africa, he's not worth knowing about. He's going to support us back in the UK. I'll supply his contact details as well. But if you want to pass those on to your next of kin, please do. And if next of kin want to contact you, that has to be really for a dire emergency. And it may take 24 to 36 hours to contact us uh, in country as well. I have the satellite phone um, turned on um, each evening just to send a text out and but that's all reliant on whether I can contact the uh, the satellite because we're in valleys steep sided mountains that's not always going to be possible the comms is a bit of a challenge certainly away from mobile phone networks as well uh, and if you do buy a 3, 3g sim or an in-country sim maybe worth um, sending that contact number out to your nearest and dearest back here in the UK we're also going to have a spot tracker um, all our tracks, all our trips and treks have trackers on. The tracker that we normally use on Killy is not going to work in here because it purely works on, say, the phone network. Spot tracker um, designed for expeditions uh, uses GPS uh, satellite technology, and I'm going to link link that up to a web page as well, so your nearest and dearest can keep a track of where we are in Nepal. Uh, and as a backup, as a side, that has an emergency button, an SOS button. I'm not going to use that here, but if you're in the Arctic, which we're looking at possibly going out in the next two or three years, this is going to work well there if we need to. So kit check. Yeah, a couple of items I did miss off um, the, the kit list is your sleeping bags. Yes, you're going to need a sleeping bag. Three to four season. Comfortable temperature, an extreme temperature of minus 15, but ideally if it's comfortable. Uh, each rating of sleeping bag uh, is slightly different. Uh, traditionally, it was a three to four season sleeping bag, but now it's it's mainly on um, temperature rating. So you want a winter sleeping bag. Uh, Chris, something similar to you had um, on Killy will be ideal. Um, as well, I'm not quite sure whether you hide one, Chris, uh, uh, Jimmy, either. But an expedition um, sleeping bag is, is spot on. 30, 25 to 35 litre day sack. To carry your sort of you know your things throughout the day and you'll have your porters to carry your main duffel bag um duffel rather than suitcase rather than rucksack it's just easier for the porters to carry that uh, on their head on their back whatever device they've got as well 70 90 litre is an ideal size cotswolds have an offer at the moment it's 60 pound for mounted equipment um duffel which is the one i use and it's uh, it's, it's it's fine first aid kit Main thing is obviously having a loose tummy, but a major showstopper is blisters. So we want to be careful. We want to manage your feet, manage your blisters, manage your boots. We're going to be on our boots a lot longer than we were in any other trek. This is one of the longest treks we do. Um, so there is a, a real risk of blisters. Um, so if you bring you know blister um, packs with you, padded um, uh, Dressings as well, so we can bandage them up. KT tape, it's a kinesthetic tape, rock tape is great. I use it all the time. Um, that'll be fantastic to bring those with you as well. Antiseptic wipes, lots of them. Uh, what I mean by lots, I mean 20 or 30 separate sachets. Because uh, if you have a cut uh, or graze or something, we need to clean that off. Because it's so dusty out there, you could use four or five just on one little cut or graze. You could eat these very, very quickly. Um, I will have a massive supply as well. So we just want to be very, very cautious of, of this as well. Anti-sickness, dioralite, bring your salts back in, paracetamol, uh, ibuprofen, uh, codeine if you want to sort of go space jumping, and Dymox. You know, bring it with you if you don't intend to use it anyway. Uh, I've said this, but you can get Dymox off a website called Dr. Fox. Um, you just need a, a dis disclaimer and they'll send it to you in the post. Um, so that's Dr. Fox. Uh, it's a website, just Google that. And moving on, personal hygiene. Lots of contrary belief that um, a lot of the deli belly, as it's commonly known, 
is not from the food, even though that can contribute to poor hygiene in kitchens. It's actually found from personal hygiene. It's from bizarrely, well, not bizarrely if you think about it, it's from not washing and cleaning our hands effectively after we've been to the loo. So we recommend you bring a scrubbing brush because there will be a limited supply of water in the evening, warm water and water in the morning. So it's a good time to get all the, the grime which is going to create behind our fingernails uh, and just clean our hands as well. Sanitizing gel, that's all it is. It doesn't clean the dirt off our hands. Um, so that's something baby wipes, which is a must. That will clean your hands as well. So it's just be cautious of what we eat with our fingers and our hands. That really will sort of cause an upset tummy on that. We want to avoid that at all costs. We're going to get it at some point, but let's be uh, sort of try and sort of maintain that as well. Foot care. Wash your feet every day, um, whether it's through a baby wipe, wipe, wipe wash, um, or through um, you know sort of a bowl of water as well. So personal hygiene is is sort of key for us. Um, treat any hot spots, hot spots where we can feel our, our feet rubbing and talcum powder. The military swear by talcum powder um, just keeps our feet dry. So any tips on there? Food. Some questions have been asked about food as well as what the food is like on the trail and the tea houses, etc. It's going to be pretty much the same menu with each one we um, we stay at. The main fundamental core of any any sort of trekking in Nepal and certainly in India as well is a dish called dalbat. It's vegetarian based, loads of rice, loads of potatoes, loads of proteins in there and you know pretty much I think the vast majority is on here you know sort of vegetarian anyway, which is great. And that's a vegetarian country. Um even though some you eat yak. Um so yeah, so Tabasco sauce, bring it because it just adds to that flavour. Even though to be fair it is quite nice as well. You can have lots of other options. You can have the Glasgow um, speciality of a deep fried Mars bar. Um, never really ventured into that uh, field. And you can have a little, little pasties called mom momos. They can be vegetarian or sort of lamb or yak. Um, and you know, we're not going to starve. You know, the portions are huge. Um, yeah, and we're going to be fine on that. Multivitamin tablets. I'm not a big sort of fan of taking supplements, but I do when I'm on expedition, just so I know I'm getting the, the, the appropriate vitamins, vitamins back in. I also take wheatgrass as well. Um, that's just rammed with proteins and lots and lots of vitamins. And we um, we get that from uh, Aldi, which is an amazing place um, for lots of lots of good reasons. So and there's more. So tipping. Obviously, it's a third world country and tipping is the culture. So minimum really what will be taken over, very similar to, to Killy, is $200, $250. Make the notes small, so $5 notes, $1 notes. That's just easy to distribute to the porters when we say goodbye to them in Lukla. Um, because they won't fly back, they'll trek back to their villages. It could be you know, a three-day trek, one-day trek, a week trek back home to, to their villages. That's just the way it is. Photocopy your documents. That's passport, your insurance details, all your sort of travel documents, photocopy them. And if you can then scan them and keep them on, in the cloud on, on Google Drive, Dropbox, um, you know, various sort of elements like that as well. So you can access them if need be when you're in the country. Passport photos, you're going to need two for your visa. So I'd bring two, plus another two as well, just in case we need them for another reason. Okay, that's pretty much the end of my part um and it's all about surrounding ourselves with we know all this anyway from from sort of our sort of individual backgrounds but it's surrounding ourselves with people that could support and encourage and inspire us as well um we've got that with this team you know with a group of people that we've got coming with with us on this sort of amazing adventure we're going to have that our in-country guides are amazing too um, they're all supportive. Nepalese people are one of the nicest, nicest peoples in the world. They are genuinely want to help you. Um, they are just genuine people. You know, the, the, the spirit um, of the country, of the communities that we're going to be passing through, all friendly. There's not one part of, of the place where you feel threatened, even walking back from Tamil district back to your hotel. We just don't feel threatened. It's just very very sort of peaceful peoples, even though they've had their issues in the past. Uh, they just want to help and, and please us, um, you know, in any way they can. So we've got that. Um, it's our duty really to help and encourage and just support each other. We're going to do that. I know you all. That's just going to be just an amazing sort of treat for everybody. 
um, sort of going forward on there. So, 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 one night only, can anybody, if anybody got the name of this mountain, just put your hand up. Can anybody remember the name of the mountain? No. Remember this one, because when you see it for the first time, she'll have her arms open for you, called Amadablam. And it's just under 7,000 meters. Uh, and it, 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 it's a climber's peak, and this overlooks the Kumbu Valley. So when we start getting, when we get to Namchi Bazaar, and we see Everest for the first time, we'll also see Amadablam as well. And when we head back towards uh, the Kumbu Valley, after we've been off it for about eight, nine days, she's gonna welcome us back into the valley. So it's really, really iconic sort of mountain uh, on that. And it's just one of, obviously, many of hundreds if not thousands of mountains in the uh, Himalaya. Lots that do not have names. So I'm going to unmute you all and we'll see how this is going to work now. So unmute uh, Simon and Chris, you unmuted, Elaine unmuted and Jim unmuted. So any questions guys? Down the, can you send the links okay right do you, you're gonna send you know, the links out you, you mentioned yes mate yeah, yeah that was a... Killy, darren say again mate got the solar charger that you had on killy which used to put on top of your tent every day, the end of the day. yeah can i'll you send you the link out for that one as well that's about 120 quid worth but well worth it so if you're going to do more of these things yeah. could, you, could you charge like cameras and phones yeah, you can, I, there's, a, there's a separate battery pack in there. It can, it can contain four double A's or four double A's. And I charge that and then charge my iPhone off that. Uh, I'm okay, thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I know it's very rude, but I had to take this uh, meeting thing. And um, yeah, you can, you can do that. And your USB packs as well, you can also charge that off your solar panel charger. I'm just making uh, a note Darren, of that. Uh, last, Darren. Yeah. When we did Killy, I had that big rucksack. It's 90 litres. Now, is yeah. that still okay? It's saying like duffel bag, preferably, but um, yeah. that's still be okay. If, yeah, if you can use, yeah, because I've seen that bag. That, that, that'll be fine. That'll be fine, mate. Yeah. I mean, if you don't get a duffel bag, but if it's, if it's okay, then yeah, I'll bring it. Yeah, don't, no, no need for extra expense if you don't need to, mate. But uh, yeah, that, that, that'll be fine. If you've already got it, that's fine. Uh, it's more the, the framed rucksacks and the framed suitcases and that we want to try and avoid. Cool. So, any other questions? Um, I think that was, that was probably it. Um, melatonin, Darren. What do you yeah. think of it? Um, it not taking it myself. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I bloody couldn't sleep for five days on the Killy trip. Yeah, it's a lot no. different than that, mate. Bring it if you want, but it's a lot different. Yeah, you just be. Yeah, it's, you're not. You're not the tent. You're in the mattress, and you know, even though it's basic, it's a step up from a tent for sure. So there's, there's, there's no electricity in the, in the tea huts. No electricity. The only electricity that there will be is from solar charge, solar panels. They'll allow us to be charging local sort of batteries and maybe a generator, but really just bank on taking our own. Um, if there is, it's a bonus, um, but pretty much the, the, there won't be because it's just unsustainable really for the amount of trackers that are going through there. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, further to your, sort of, your, your problem with your sleeping, on Killy, we just gain so much height so quickly. Here it's gradual. Every third day, is a, is a rest day, is a sleep day. We don't climb, we don't sleep any higher than 300 meters from the night before. Whereas Killy, we're probably going a thousand meters from the night before. You know, which is a big, big difference. Hello, you. Hi, mate. Yeah, just one quick question. Um, are we, um, you know, on Killy, I was surprised when we turned up. I didn't really know that we were going to have like porters carrying everything. Um, yes, mate. This time round, um, are we carrying all our own kit? Um, well, porters as well, mate. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so if you bring a duffel uh, and then just a day bag, mate. All right, that's easy. 
So yeah, okay, yes. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, mate. Yeah. Uh, also, I forgot to mention as well. Could we be leaving some of our kit in the hotel? You just bring a separate bag as well for your, you know, your your clean gear when you get back from uh, from the trek as well. Leave that in the hotel. Cool. Okay. Yeah, and there may be facilities to to clean as well, but just leave a spare set of clothes in the in the hotel. That's what I'm saying. What about dry bags? Uh, yes, mate. Dry bags, definitely. Just for help for storage as well. I'm not going to say we don't tend to get a lot of rain, but we don't tend to get a lot of rain here. But I'm not going to say that because Soslo we will. <laughs> Certainly for the first few days, anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dry question. bags as well. Cool. No, this is a silly question. Obviously, we're going to be away for three weeks. Yes. Obviously, we can't possibly take three weeks with the clothes, like undies and socks and stuff. But will there be any chance to wash the clothes? Yeah, or? good question. Take um, trekking, proper trekking undies rather than cotton because they'll dry a lot quicker. And it might sound horrible to sort of be some of the cleaner people within the team, but you can wear them for multi days, and that's what they're designed for. Just so go, Commando, we'll get, get rid of them. Absolutely, mate, go for it. <laughs> 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 yeah, <Darryl>. so, <laughs> but there will be, yeah, on, on our rest days, there will be an element of warm water that we can certainly wash our, our smalls in and socks. Do you, is, Darren, is, is there a, a, a site you get your, your underpants from? I would never thought I'd ask this question, but there you go. I use, my, my undies are Rowan. The ro oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll show, I'll show yeah, you now, hang on. No. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a pair on now. <laughs> And you've been wearing them since uh, August. <laughs> Just testing them out. <laughs> Inside out and the other way around again. Absolutely. So what's that? Six ways. For those, not not for your underpants. I don't want to see that weird kind of. Yeah, Rowan bags. There's. Um, I know it's a bit. It's still a bit of a trip. But next time you're in Snowdonia, guys, pop into Betty Coed. Uh, there's a shop in uh, Betty Coed. A Rowan shop. Okay. Uh, Rowan. So, yeah. R O W. R O H N. Oh, oh, that Rowan. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're the ones I've always had and I've had them for absolute years. Not the same pair of mine, but <laughs> I have got one pair I've had for years and it looks like I've had it for years as well. So that's just a... <laughs> White as well, so not a good colour. Um, yeah, there will be. Obviously, the same pair of trousers you'll wear on day one is the same pair of trousers you'll wear on day 15. T-shirts as well, quick drying ones as well. You can rotate those. We're just going to rough it a bit, which is pretty cool, really. Okay. okay. I'll send you that stuff after this, Darren. Yeah, cheers for that, mate. You, you bring your drone? Yeah, I've got a small one now, mate. Nice one. So, um, it's the Mavic, if you've um, been Mavic. following any drone technology, okay. yeah. Yeah. You still got Mavic Pro. Oh, yeah, I've still got the other. This is far more portable. Yes, yeah, perfect, mate. So, it's like pretty much um, cargo pocket sized. Wow. Really? Mm. Yeah. Simon, um, you're going to get one? <laughs> only yeah, issue is I've only, I've only got one battery for it, so that's a bit of an issue. Have you got a charger unit for it? Yeah, I've got a charger, but, you know, I just picked up, you know, I, I, as I expected, really, what you were saying about, um, you know, charging facility. Yeah. Using sun, um, and all that sort of thing so I mean you can't you can't charge you can charge the controller with um, a USB power pack but you can't I don't think you can charge the um, the main drone um, battery with um, with just a you know a little power bank you're going to need something a bit more juicy I think yeah okay yeah I mean these, these I mean the solar charger that we use I can't remember the brand now but they are scalable as well, so okay. you can have multiple. They've got more than one. They're quite sizable um, solar panels, so you have two of those. Uh, I know yeah. a lot of sort of the big expeditions use them. Um, use the bigger ones as well for like charging cameras and charging drones and, and stuff like that. So I'll send those links out uh, for that. As, as, as well, I've got. Um, yeah, I've you know, um, it, it's worth bring, me bringing the drone because it's not that big, and even if I just get one battery's worth yeah. of footage out of it, it's still worth bringing it. Um, yeah, for sure. So it's all good. Yeah, for sure. I know Simon's taken his uh, camera kit as well, so I think between us all, we'll have some decent footage. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, it's going to be planet Earth going on. 
No, it is. Brilliant. So, Jim, Elaine, any, any questions, guys? Totally. No, brilliant. No, I have all the questions I've answered anyway, and it's, it's I'm kind of, I'm kind of prepared. Yeah. No, it's very, you don't kill it, it's very similar to that, but a little bit longer and a little bit easier yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, on that, fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, guys, any, any other questions? Any thoughts? Anything you want to ask us? Uh, um, yeah. um, oh, God. oh um, anybody hiring equipment? Yes. Like, uh, just down jackets and uh, sleeping bags. Yep. <clears throat> you did, Jim. Who are you using? Uh, exhibition kit hire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the way it was used for Kilimanjaro. Yeah, that's what I'm using. Based in Cardiff, I Shush. think. Shush. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to use them again. Yeah. His name's Stuart. That's right, yeah. That's the guy. Shush. 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 I just sent him an email again. He just sent me a bar and says, it's £280 pound each. That's what say, Jim? It's about 280 or 300 each. Yeah. That sounds about right, yeah. I think we think we pay before we actually get... The stuff as well. Yeah, I'm already. Yeah. I'll sort my yeah. last week. Yeah, all good. Cool. Yeah, pretty good. I've had good feedback. I never spoke to the guys down there, but um, the uh, killer trip last year for Sean in the wheelchair and 28 clients, they all hired all their kit through through uh, Stuart. So, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty good. I think it will be okay bringing dry park food. Yes, mate, if you want to, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to read that's an Achille after five days. <laughs> <laughs> Food's a lot of <laughs> some better there. Yeah. yeah, bring bring yeah, bring snacks as well. You know, same thing. You can buy snacks during the trek from the tea houses. Yeah, Mars bars and shit like that. Sorry, stuff like that. But um yeah, bring your own sort of favourite stuff as well. Obviously we can't do so it's on the on their gym, so I'm just sort of bringing some wheatgrass and that with us. Yep. Okay. Uh, on drop toilets, Darren. <laughs> Yeah, there's a mixture, mate. There's a mixture. A bit of porcelain, a bit of long drop, and yeah, yeah, a bit of variety on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your buff. You need your buffs, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Porcelain, uh, long drop, all in the ground. Elaine's <laughs> <laughs> saying, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, we'll introduce her. We'll introduce her soon. <laughs> Nah, it's going to be awesome, guys. Can't, I cannot wait for this. Were you saying about um, hot water? Hot water, so, yeah. We'll still get a bowl like we did on Killy. Um, but what so, I'm thinking about bring dry pack food. Well, I ah, dry pack food. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, yeah, hot water for washing, but hot water for tea and coffee and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, there should be enough. There should be enough. Aye. Right. There yeah. really is a cup full of hot water. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So we'll follow water up as well. So I, w I would recommend bringing, um, I don't take it on, on Kilimanjaro, sort of um, cleansing tablets for the water, etc. but I tend to on, on Nepal. It's just because the, the water sources where we're taking it from can quite easily be polluted by, by humans. Not saying it always is, but there's more of a chance there. Yeah. Um, so I don't like doing it. I don't like filling my body with chemicals, but... I suppose it's better than somebody's urine or something like that. Means to name. Yeah, it is. It is unfortunately, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Do we, Darren, do we um, do we take camel packs for yeah. take, taking water during drink bladders? Drink bladders. Yeah, yeah. Always good to take them because you can monitor. You know, you can you can still still, still the same deal as on Killy. We need to drink you know three to four liters a day um, to um, keep that um, acclimatization going. Camel packs, um, brilliant. Um, Right, and you say saying about sterilisation, is that what you're talking about, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're being sort of chlorine tablets and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like them, okay. but it's still a means to an end. Uh, I'd rather do that and keep it down, not shit myself then. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly. the sterilisation. I'm actually. killing out, I don't, right. because I know where the so sources are coming from. Uh, yeah, but on, it's fine, in Nepal, yeah. it is a bit. Higher up, when we get out, out off the Kumbu to Gokyo, we're fine. Because yeah. it's, it's okay. less busy. There's not as many people there. Um, 
So yeah, they'll, they'll aim to to obviously boil everything as well and to take it from a clean source. But I'll just err on a side of caution on this one. You know, if we were yeah. more remote into sort of a hidden valley in the Himalaya, I wouldn't bother sterilising anything at all. But just um, you know, just drink out the stream. Plus, also go. You've got you know you've got inhabitants there as well. They're going to be doing their washing. They're going to be doing their stuff in all the water. Um, as I'm not saying that's where we're going to get our drinking water from anyway, but you've always got that little bit of a risk uh, there as well. It's just killing everything. Yeah. Okay, cool. Super. Excellent. In, in the tea houses at Starren, I don't know if you've ever missed this, but you kind of form of washing facilities now, like a little... Wait, oh, it... Yeah, there'll be a little bowl that you'll get. Just a bowl. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm not expecting yeah, a little, little bowl. Um, that, that, that'll be on most of them as well. And it's sort of prioritising what you need to wash because there's only limited supply. Um, yeah. So obviously feet, you know, hair, maybe. Nether regions. Uh, nether regions, absolutely. Um, but a wet white wash will do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be getting a bath. Really the ah, you'll appreciate that shower when you get back into Kathmandu. You really will. <laughs> Big. No, I'm big, appreciate big, this well. in, um, um, what's it? Um, oh, of the Killy. Where was the lodge? Where do, where do? When we got where? back to the lodge after Killy, that shower was fantastic. Yeah, where do, where do? yeah it's, it is a nice shower, that one. I'm going to miss going there. <laughs> I'm just seeing. I've got a question. Yeah, go for it, Elaine. So, are we for 20? Woo! Woo that's because you guys are sitting too close together, you're getting yeah. feedback. Yeah, that's what it is. If I mute gyms. So, okay, go for it. We're going to be... Oh, no, that's oh. terrible. Yeah, no, yeah. Jim, you've got to turn your mic off, mate. Right? Yeah, and I've muted my We're going to be for 22 days, so 14 days of that we're going to be on the mountain, is that right? Uh, no, longer than that. We're going to be on the mountain for nearly... So we're away for 20 odd days, so nearly three weeks. So three about, weeks. 18, about 18 days. All right, so, the, and so we're only really going to be in a hotel for four nights. Four, four, nights. four nights. Yeah. So we just need four nights closed for. Yeah. For the... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you'll be living in the same, majority of the same clothes for nearly three weeks, which is pretty cool, really. We don't, we don't get the chance to do that in the UK. Well, I, I used to be sometimes. one day, never mind three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't need to take that much stuff, you see. Eh? We don't need to take that much gear because we're living in the same kit for like three weeks. All right. uh, it, it's all pretty. It's all pretty much we are. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's it. <laughs> Darren, is it worth, uh, you said last time it's worth, um, when we did Kill Eight, Wearing our walking boots on the plane, in case they just sort of same thing apply. Is it worth doing that? Yeah, it's a good, good point. Yeah, I've got to mention that. Yeah, it is. It is. If you could take um, your boots at least in your day pack on on the flight, yeah. uh, that's great. And then enough kit to at least start walking. The benefit we've got in in Kathmandu is we can buy kit. In fact, you can buy lots of kit. Too much kit. <laughs> If that's yeah. possible. So leave I a bit of space in your rucksack. I've got far too much. I can't resist going into an outdoor. There's never too much kit. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and it's all gen it's all genuine North Face mammoth gear, obviously. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. But it, but it works. It works. I've worn it on, on, on winter and snow on Good Park and it works. Is it cheaper out there? Oh yes. Is it? Oh okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so leave a space in your bag. We can go in there on the way back then. Definitely on the way back. Brilliant. Right. Yeah, I've got oh, kit I still wear now. Spelling error on North Face is North Feces as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the slightly <laughs> uh, off angled badge. But it, it, it's fair. Yeah, to be fair, it's the so porters and the guys wear it. Three weeks, you know. <laughs> so you fine. Three weeks as well. Your shit, James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic, guys. Uh, it's been a good night. Brilliant. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, he's at the dart. Um, so uh, he sent his apologies. Not good enough. 
<laughs> as well. Ah. <laughs> got him on his drone. On his, on his, got his drone. <laughs> so that'd be pretty cool to get some. Right. Be, uh, right. I look forward to meeting you guys. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. See you at Heathrow. See you at Heathrow. Are you flying down again, Jim? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, wonderful. I'll see you all in Kathmandu. Ciao, Good. Dan. Which airline do we fly? Which airline we fly uh, with? Air India. Oh. Air India? Okay, right. Air India. Yeah, big flights all the way to Delhi. Um, so it gets a big chunk of the journey out of the way first, and there's just an hour and a half up uh, from there to Kathmandu. That's why I've chosen it, really. Right, right. So you get your long haul, you seven and a half hours done, and then an hour and a half after that. Excellent. So no big layovers, couple of hours, sort of stopovers, and you know, pretty pretty good timing really. So all works well. Right. How long's the flight to New Delhi? About seven hours forty minutes, give or take. Not much. Yeah, pretty good. So it's longer than way back because we we'll get to jet stream. Yeah, Neither than twenty-four hours to Austria to Melbourne. It's nothing really. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. So I might have an opportunity actually to go out to Sydney as well soon. So that'd be pretty cool. Right. Yeah, good. Right. Brilliant. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Excellent. Guys, been a pleasure. I'll drop you for email yeah. between now and then. Set up the WhatsApp group as well. I know you yeah. probably won't be able to join, Chris, because of your antiquated phone. Unless you've got a new phone. He's got, no, he's got, oh, he's got WhatsApp I've now. I've got a new phone. I've got what's. Oh, what's mate. It? <laughs> oh, broken. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have to send everybody the photos from Killy soon. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. That's it, guys. I'll uh, stop sharing and then stop recording. Right. See you at Sadie Catch See you, you in, in Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Brilliant. Brilliant. See you soon. Cheers, guys. See you, guys. Oh, Don't lose any more weight, Darren. Well, yeah. you'll be far to find. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs>